Welcome to a hands-on Azure Data Studio video tutorial. My name's Alex, and I'll be your video guide throughout this book. Today we're going to be digging into Azure Data Studio notebooks and how they can tell the story with your data. I'm going to show you the two main components of notebooks, code and text. The text feature is similar to comments, although they are much more powerful, and the code is language code that is executable. Note that the queries we'll be using in this session are based on a car crash database that lists car accidents within the five boroughs of New York City for a period of time. So, if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial keystroke by keystroke, you can download the sample notebook and database from our ebook at leanpub.com. See the description for the book link. Let's get hands on. We're going to start by creating a new notebook from the startup menu. You can also click File, New Notebook. Note that for this demonstration, we've chosen SQL as the kernel for our code. OK, we're going to start with a text cell. And we can now enter in Markdown text. Markdown is a language similar to HTML, but is much easier to use. Headings start with a single pound sign and a space. And there's no closing tag, as it simply goes to the end of the line. Beneath that, we have a comment that's going to provide a link, and the link syntax is very simple. We have the description inside of two brackets, and the link following it in parentheses. You can see the rendered version of your markdown text on the right side of the screen. The next line is our first query, which is two from dates that is illustrated as a subheading. Note that subheadings start with two pound signs instead of one. Once you are happy with the markdown, you can save it, or click outside of the editor to see how it looks fully rendered. The next thing we're going to do is add a code block for queries. To do this, click the plus cell button, and we're going to paste it in the very first query. This query will tell us how many years are included within this car crash data. Click the run cell button to the left of the query to connect to the car crash database. It shows there is about eight years of collected data starting from mid-2012 to early 2020. Now we know the time span of the data that we're looking at, and as you can see, we're developing a story here, so people can understand the context and better understand what we're going to return in terms of the result set. Now I want to enter in more comments, so I'll click the Add Cell button and choose a text cell. The next thing I'll want is car accidents group by hour, so we'll enter that as a subheading in the markdown with two pound signs. Next, I'll paste in the query associated with this by adding a code cell. Just a reminder, all of the queries I'm pasting in come from a notebook that can be downloaded from within our ebook. Okay, now let's run the query. Now we can see all the accidents over this eight year period by the hour of the day. Predictably, during the morning and afternoon rush hour, the numbers spike quite a bit. Another great feature of notebooks in Azure Data Studio is the ability to quickly graph your results. To do this, simply click the Show Chart button within the result sets, and we can now see our results graphically. We can improve the graph visually by setting the series within the configured chart to use the first column as row label. As you can see, it's color-coded, and the majority of the accidents take place during the hour 16, which is 4 p.m. to 4.59 p.m. Now we can really see this notebook is telling a story, and we now know when most accidents occur. But I think there can be more to this particular story. What if we want to know how many of these accidents have fatalities associated with it? To find this out, we're going to start by repeating the same process of adding an additional text cell for our next subheading. We'll name this Car Accidents with Fatalities Group by Hour. Next, we'll add a code cell where we'll paste in the query that tells us how many accidents were associated with fatalities. Let's run the query to get our results, but to give it the most impact, we're going to chart the data like we did earlier. Now we can compare the two graphs to see that the number of accidents with fatalities is out of proportion to the total number of accidents. The charts suggest that the earlier morning hours have fewer total accidents but carry a higher percentage of accidents with fatalities. This is now the assumption, but we can go further into the story and see if we can quantify it. So, let's repeat the steps for the new subheading and name it Car Accidents with Fatalities as a Percentage Grouped by Hour. We'll copy and paste the new query, 
which is quite large this time, making our downloaded sample notebook very handy. The first two sections of this query are what we just collected, total number of accidents and the number of associated fatalities. The last section will compute the percentages with fatalities. Okay, let's run the cell. Now we can see, percentage-wise, it's far more dangerous to drive in New York City's five boroughs during the early hours of the day, even though the total number of accidents are higher during the later hours. All of the results are stored within the notebook, allowing you to save it and share it with others, even if they don't have database connectivity. In summary, notebooks offer a nice vehicle for sharing insights, sharing actionable data, and visually presenting your results in a professional manner.